Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we gather tonight for evening prayer. Just a note before we begin, Eric Peterson, our associate pastor, his wife Chelsea has tested positive for COVID-19. And so Eric is quarantining at, at this point, he is negative for the virus. So we can give thanks for that, but he's under quarantine now. So our prayers are with Eric and especially with his wife, Chelsea. In this season of Advent, we live in a time of expectation and hope. While we await the promised coming of Christ, we are mindful of the presence of God and the presence of God's promise all around us. It is good for us to take time to find that quiet place where we can listen intently for God's word to us, where we can quiet our hearts long enough so that we may listen for what God may be trying to say to us. As we prayerfully consider the text this evening, we practice Lexio Divina. It's simple. I will read through the text twice. The first time through, as we reflect on the text following the reading, consider what was the author of the text trying to say? Why was this included in what he felt necessary? The second time, we ask you to take the text deeper. What is the text saying to you in your journey, where you are, here and now? This is a process of praying the scriptures. Oftentimes when I do this, and it is my practice to write down what I'm thinking in those moments of reflection, you may find that helpful as well. But I would also suggest that you read this text over and over throughout the week and listen for what God may be saying to you. Tonight's text is from the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, verses 22 through 38. This is a marvelous story at the end of the whole Christmas narrative in the Gospel of Luke. Jesus has been born, and his parents are taking him to the temple for the rites of purification. And in doing so, they encounter two older saints. Simeon, a longtime devout follower, and one on whom the Holy Spirit rests, and Anna, a prophetess who lived and breathed prayer in the temple. When they encounter the Christ child, something becomes quite real to them as they experience the presence of Christ and the possibilities of God's salvation for all humankind. From the youngest to the oldest, the God speaks to us through the gift of Christ Jesus, our Lord. More than waiting, the advent of Christ is God's promise revealed to all of us. Let us enter into a brief time of silence as we prepare to receive God's word to us. Join me. Loving God, you are the Most High, and you have surprising preference for people who are small and humble and who expect everything from you. You chose to show Simeon, your humble servant, a glimpse of your promised redemption. 
you chose to show Anna the evidence of your very present promise in the presence of Christ. Through your Holy Spirit, O God, make us aware of the poverty of our hearts, that we may be open to you and welcome you. Be ready, like Simeon, to open our eyes, like Anna, to hear your voice, so that we too may catch a glimpse of your promised grace in the coming of Christ. Come to us, O Lord, and give yourself to us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The reading tonight comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 to 38. Listen now for God's word to you. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother, Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer day and night. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. As we reflect on this text this evening, Let's take a moment and consider what was the scripture saying? What was the author's intention? Join me now in this time of reflection.
as I read the text a second time. Let us listen for what this text is saying to us here and now. Listen again for God's word to you. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we spend a few moments reflecting on this text, let's look within. What does the text say to you tonight?
Pray with me. Loving and gracious God, your word continues to lead us, guide us, and fill us with anticipation and hope. For the promise of the advent of Christ is our promise. And let us live into that promise each day. Fill our hearts with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Come before God in prayer. At the end of each petition, I will say, Your kingdom come. And feel free to say along with me at home, Your will be done. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Pray with me now. Let us come before God in prayer. God of Advent and hope, we wait with eager expectation of the coming of your kingdom, when the humble will be exalted and the hungry fed, when our hopes will be realized and the promise of your presence be forever sealed in our hearts. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord, we prepare for your advent with searching minds and contrite hearts trusting in your healing spirit and redemptive love. Let us listen for your voice with open hearts that we may receive the promise of your grace and your peace. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Lord, we watch with those who wait and weep, longing to see the rule of justice and the reign of your peace. O oh, loving and gracious God, fill us with the peace that passes our understanding so that we may respond and extend that peace to those around us. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Mm -hmm. 
Lord, help us to seek you among the despised and the rejected, knowing that there we will find your light shining in the darkness. Help us to take our eyes off of ourselves and turn our eyes to the world in need, that we might extend the light of your peace in even the darkest places. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Lord, we stand with you as you proclaim sight to the blind and liberty to the oppressed, trusting in your tender mercy and passion for goodness and righteousness for all people. Loving God, give us hearts to see, give us ears to hear, so that we might respond in grace and peace, and find our joy in you. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord, help us to work with each other to proclaim your truth, challenging the mighty and raising the meek. For the truth, O oh God, that is yours is one of love, of acceptance, of welcoming. Your truth, O oh God, manifested in our lives helps us to see more clearly the presence of Christ in each other and in our own lives. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Lord, we wrestle with our hopes and our fears, our struggles and our joys, laboring to come to a new birth, a deeper understanding, a fulfillment of your promise. Loving God, touch our hearts so that we might find joy, so that we might express that joy with one another, so that in gratitude we may know that nothing can separate us from your love. Now, O Lord, hear us with one voice as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 